Pigment, Arizona is the proclaimed heart of historic Route 66, with 160 miles of smiles, the longest remaining uninterrupted section of this storied old highway. But Route 66 was just a modern manifestation of centuries of transportation through this valley. But sports riders called them the Cactus Derby, and they ran from 1909 to 1914, from Los Angeles to Phoenix. And the 1914 race followed the National Old Trails Highway from Los Angeles to Ash Fork, through Oatman, and down through these canyons, and then turned south uh, through Prescott and down Yarnell Hill into Phoenix. And by 1914, the races had become so famous, they attracted the big boys, the Dale Earnhardts of their day. Louis Chevrolet, uh, Barney Oldfield, William Durant's son, and William Durant was the founder of General Motors. A lot of the explorers followed this canyon and different courses through here. Uh, the Father Garces expedition of 1776 came through this canyon, and then finally over at uh, Beale Springs was the first campsite they noted. You can see the Black Mountains in the distance. This is a real formidable section of the National Old Trails Highway and Route 66. It was bypassed in 1952. That section of Route 66 has the steepest grades and the sharpest curves found anywhere on Route 66. One of the, one of the curves over by Gold Road, buses had to offload passengers. The bus would back up the hill into the clearing and the passengers would walk up the hill and reboard because the bus could not make the curve. Kingman, Arizona. It's a little bit of a diamond in the rough compared to Beale Street, which is getting a little polish at this time with the opening of new businesses. On this corner in 1925 was the American Kitchen, and this put Kingman on the map, but not for the good reasons. It was a uh, Chinese Tong assassination from Los Angeles. Uh, killed a gentleman here at the American Kitchen, and it put Kingman on the map internationally, largely as a result of the legal trial, because the assassins were 15, 16, and 18 years of age. The Hotel Beale is a cornerstone for the Kingman history associated with Route 66. My pa always told me it's better to fill your head with useless knowledge than no knowledge at all. The National Old Trails Highway that preceded Route 66, originally when it was established in 1912, went from Springerville, Arizona, south through Globe and Miami uh, to the Ocean to Ocean Highway in uh, Yuma. It was Tom Devine, the proprietor of the Hotel Beale, and some business owners that attended the 1913 convention and convinced them that the National Trails Highway needed to be rerouted across northern Arizona. And of course, in 1926, that became Route 66. Thomas Devine was the father of Andy Devine, the namesake for Route 66 through Kingman. Andy was a character actor in Hollywood with more than 200 films to his credit. And in 1955, the television program This Is Your Life, they had a ceremony where they renamed Front Street Andy Devine Avenue. In 1925, Buster Keaton stayed at the Hotel Beale while filming Go West at Tab Duncan's Ranch. And Tab Duncan was a celebrity in his own right. Had an association with Kid Curry by name. And an encounter with some fellows who rode with Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Tap died downtown after being struck and killed by a drunk driver in 1947. Charles Lindbergh also stayed at the Hotel Beale in 1928 and 29 when he was establishing the airfield here as part of the TAT Airlines, a real pioneering enterprise. And Amelia Earhart was here for the ribbon cutting. The Hotel Brunswick. It also has a bit of a celebrity association. Aside from being one of the oldest commercial structures we have in Kingman, dating to about 1909, pre-territorial area, when Clark Gable and Carol Lombard married in 1939, the reception was held here at the Hotel Brunswick. And in 1915, Edsel Ford, then 21 years of age, and some of his buddies had left Detroit, headed for the Panama Pacific Exposition in California. They decided to follow the National Old Trails Highway because they wanted to see the national parks, the Grand Canyon, and the Great Southwest. 
They left Williams uh, mid-July. 150 miles later, they arrived here at the Hotel Brunswick. The rest of the block, we have, this was originally a Cadillac LaSalle dealer, which was part of the, the old trails garage. This building also served as a Packard dealership. And even though the Renaissance is a bit slow on this block, things are starting to happen. The Route 66 Association of Kingman in January launched a neon sign restoration initiative. And one of the signs that they're restoring is a beautiful 1930s Packard sales and service sign that'll be rehung here on the uh, Old Trails garage. This building dates to about 1916. This would be two years after the last of the Desert Classic Cactus Derby races. Kingman finds itself as not only a historic story of the U.S. Southwest, but as a destination for adventure seekers. This once small town nestled up against Route 66 now serves as the byway to destinations like Las Vegas, Nevada. Only 90 minutes away, the place known as Sin City awaits those looking to try their luck at 122 casinos or enjoy a Broadway show with their family. Less than one hour away sits one of the world's seven wonders, the Grand Canyon. People from all over the world come to see this amazing natural canyon, measuring up to 6,000 feet deep. This site will leave many breathless. In 2016 marked the highest number of visitors to the canyon. Nearly 6 million visitors have been through one of the multiple points of viewing through our national park system. Grand Canyon West, which is only one hour drive from Kingman, reached their highest number of visitors, over 1 million people. This unique destination features a clear glass-bottomed horseshoe-shaped skywalk that takes you out over 4,000 feet above the canyon floor. Owned and operated by the Wallapai tribe, this is truly one of the must-see locations along the 277 miles of the Grand Canyon. ATV riders look no further as Kingman and surrounding area are home to over 60 plus miles of trails. With over 290 days of sunshine, this makes Kingman one of the most popular four-wheeler destinations in the country. Over 2,300 acres and elevations up to 8,400 feet, the Wallapai Mountains offer hiking, camping, picnicking, and many more opportunities to enjoy nature. The Renaissance of the Kingman's Historic District is starting to sweep along Beale Street. This block was the first to be renovated with Beale Celebrations, formerly a J.C. Penney's building and city's offices. Long empty, the central commercial complex now has vitality. This was originally the Valley National Bank. The vault is still inside. Now it serves as the community's art hub. Elmer Graves, the owner of this building, this block of buildings, also owns the Old Trails Garage. Been a Kingman fixture for many, many years, recently turned 90. And he's owned many, many businesses downtown. Colorful stories about changing times in Kingman. As you can see, it's being transformed today. We have Diane's Wine Cellar. Where Floyd and Company's wood-fired pizza parlor, that was the butcher shop for the uh, Central Commercial. They were still in business up into the 1970s. At the end, where the barbecue place is at, there was their grocery department. Sirens Cafe is opened in the old Gaddis Insurance Building with Blackbridge Brewery. The whole block is transformed on the third Saturday of every month. This becomes a replay of American Graffiti with Chill on Beale, April through October, where people just come and meet with neighbors, cruise, show off their cars, generally enjoy the downtown district, the music, the vibe. The Route 66 Association of Kingman recently added some beautiful murals here as photo ops for people, showing all the different aspects. We have Kingman, Arizona, 
state of Arizona, our neighbors up in Peach Springs, the Wallapai Reservation, and of course Mojave County, Arizona. Once again, my pa always told me better to fill your head with useless knowledge than no knowledge at all. But when Mojave County was established in 1864, it originally incorporated a large part of what is now Southern Nevada, including Clark County. So technically, if things hadn't have changed, Las Vegas would have been Las Vegas, Arizona. As we continue our trek along Route 66 in Kingman, we stop into the Powerhouse Museum. Uh, this, is the, this is the Kingman Visitor Center, Kingman Powerhouse. It's the offices for the uh, historic Route 66 Association of Arizona. And quite fittingly, it is also the home to the world's first electric vehicle museum. Uh, when this building was established in 1909, it supplied all of the electrical power for area communities as well as the mines uh, in the area. It was uh, made obsolete with completion of Hoover Dam in the 1930s. So it's quite fitting that today it would be the uh, start, the hinge pin for a new electric vehicle museum. Kind of cements Kingman's relationship as the uh, crossroads of the past and future. This building also houses a uh, award-winning Route 66 museum. Some pretty interesting little uh, displays here, like Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings golf cart, complete with liquor bar on the back. This is a, a very interesting little little gadget here. Uh, at the end of World War II, the Kingman Army Airfield was converted to a storage depot for the demolition and scrapping of World War II aircraft. And uh, this was this wheelchair was made for a returning vet, and it was all made out of salvaged parts from the Kingman Army Airfield. Uh, the uh, motor is a B-17 turret gunner, electric motor. The foot pedals are out of the B-17. And the idea behind this museum, in partnership with the Historic Electric Vehicle Foundation, is to present an entire history of the electric vehicle. And my pa always said, better to fill your head with useless knowledge than no knowledge at all. And uh, the electric vehicle has a real key place in American automotive evolution. Before 1905, almost 80% of all the vehicles made in the United States were electric or steam powered. And in New York, all of your buses, taxi cabs were almost all electric before 1905. And the first pedestrian ever struck and killed by an automobile was killed in New York City, struck by an electric taxi cab in 1898. Detroit Electric was one of the more successful electric automotive companies. As antiquated as this vehicle looks, it's actually a relatively late model, 1929-1930. The only real change is from the 1916, 18, and 19 models, they lowered the roof by almost three feet. But if you notice on the inside, you drive this without a steering wheel with a tiller and the passenger rides in the front of the car looking towards the back and you drive it from the rear of the car. All of the electric cars, but specifically Detroit Electric, uh, were very popular with female drivers, especially in the before World War I because the difficulties of starting, crank starting, and other problems with an automobile, these were relatively simple. You jump in them and go. Your tillers, one is for forward and reverse and the other is for stop. And uh, Clara Ford, Henry Ford's wife, she had a custom Detroit Electric because the Model T was a little quirky in its driving. Walter Chrysler's wife had a Detroit Electric. And in the modern era, the electric vehicle is becoming the hot rod of a new generation. Uh, one of the cars that is raced at the Portland Speedway and we've had on display here at the museum is the White Zombie, a 1974 Datsun converted into a street legal racing machine that just set a world's record of zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds. And Roderick uh, Wild of the Historic Electric Vehicle Foundation did a program recently for the Discovery Channel about his conversion of a postal van into a fully electric race vehicle. 
This was the latest acquisition for the museum. It was part of the ASU fleet when they were testing different kinds of batteries for an electric vehicle program. And as I noted, the, the uh, Electric Vehicle Museum, the idea is to present and chronicle the entire evolution of the American automotive industry from the perspective of, of electric vehicles. This was used around 1909 as a package delivery truck for the railroads, taking um, uh, luggage from the train depot to ho uh, neighboring hotels. Uh, electric motorcycles, electric micro cars, quite an extensive collection cars with uh, 1950s taillights, quirky little cars. The entire evolution will be done when this, when this museum comes together. Uh, like the wheelchair there from World War II, this is really an interesting little vehicle here. This is actually an electric wheelchair built by Custer. They built this in the uh, end of World War I for returning veterans. But they also made automobiles, electric automobiles, and they were very unique because they were so narrow, uh, the license plates were actually wider than the automobiles. Play here in each of these windows is little time capsules of not only Kingman and Route 66 history, but the American societal evolution. These little sticks from Kingman Motor Company. Uh, if you notice on one side they have gallons on there and Model T Fords lacked a gas gauge. So when you bought a new Ford, you got a pretty little stick to lift up your seat cushion and stick it into your gas tank to tell how many gallons you had left. Studebaker was always one of my favorite automobile companies. Here's another great little trivia thing for you, but between 1885 and 1940, the United States had almost 3,000 different automotive companies. And Studebaker, now gone and forgotten pretty much, was one of the most successful companies. They actually got their start in the California gold fields. One of the brothers uh, went there hoping to strike it rich, found there was more money selling things to miners, and he started making wheelbarrows. Uh, by the 1870s, the Studebaker brothers had the largest corporation in the world for building wheeled vehicles. A lot of your gun carriages and uh, wagons for the Union Army during World War II, World War, uh, the Civil War, were Studebaker built. And their automobiles were always very stylish and very unique and innovative. And here we have uh, Kingman in World War II, home of the Kingman Army Airfield. At, at that time, it was one of the largest flexible gunnery schools in the United States for the war. And after the war, we had a storage depot here. And it was the largest concentration of military aircraft in the world. New and used warbirds, bombers, and fighter planes, almost all of them were converted to scrap metal. Proceeding Route 66 was the National Old Trails Highway. It's interesting to note, this, this is actually from a 1914 uh, guidebook to the good roads of Arizona. And I happen to have a copy of this, and it's always intriguing to read some of the little notations that they made, like bad road, rough, or best road. And the section going from Kingman to Summit to Gold Road, and you have your grade indications, 28% grades. Things people would be hard pressed to do with Jeeps today. Yeah. Extensive promotion. This was Arthur Black had a brilliant idea. He was a real pioneer here in Arizona with automotive situations. He started the Hoover Dam stage line, a bus company. Uh, he was instrumental in construction of the Burrow Creek Bridge uh, going down to Phoenix. And of course, proceeding the National Trails Highway in the era of automobiles, it was the railroad that coursed through northern Arizona and put Kingman on the map, literally. Kingman started as a railroad camp. It was originally named Sheffield Camp and then was named after Lewis Kingman, a railroad uh, survey engineer. And uh, in 2014, when we did the International Route 66 Festival, uh, Bob Bose Bell, one of our favorite native sons, donated and contributed to the creation of this exhibit that, in, that includes uh, family photos, family video. Bob's father owned a series of service stations here in Kingman, and Bob went on to do things like become an internationally acclaimed artist, 
Uh, he has he had his own program on the Westerns Channel and uh, True West Magazine. And of course, neon is a big part of the Route 66 experience. And these uh, videos that Bob has here, you can see, were taken from Hilltop in 1963, showing what Kingman looked like in those years. And here's some of Bob's artwork. Bob's had displays all over the world and become quite famous. The Chemo Cafe, today it's known as Mr. D's Diner, but you can always tell, you can tell by the corner windows. Interestingly enough, in the 1990s when they converted that, they tried to make it look like a caricature of a Route 66 diner, and it always was. It's been there since 1939. This was Bob Bell's father's station, and it's still there, but now it's Lomelli's Garden Arts. Uh, the gas station pumps are still there, and next door is Rutherford's Route 66 Diner. Hillcrest Motel is still with us. The Lockwood Cafe is still with us. But sharing his family movies was very nice of Bob, and gives us a little bit of a sneak peek at what Kingman was, was like so many years ago. How much has changed, how much has remained the same. Bob wrote a book about his experiences growing up in Kingman. It recently was released called The 66 Kid, a snapshot of Kingman in the 1950s. And as more and more people discover the wonder of Kingman, Arizona, I think it's going to become a destination as well. Not just for travelers, not just for adventurers seeking things like these miles of scenic mountain bike and hiking trails or discovering the pine-covered oasis that's Wallapai Mountain Park, or the neon downtown and great events like Chillin' on Beale. I think people are going to discover this is a place to live, to retire, to raise families, to open businesses. I have a feeling that Kingman is about to become a little bit more than a stop on the way to. I have a feeling it's about to become a destination. With that said, folks, it's time to saddle up, hit the road, and set off on another adventure in Jim Hinckley's America. Until next time, mi amigos, adios, see you on the road. In September 2016, Zenek Jurisic, the president of the Route 66 Association of Czech Republic, bicycled all 2,400 miles of Route 66 from Chicago to Santa Monica, stopping into Kingman, Arizona. He was quoted saying, Many look at Route 66 as a symbol of American progress, hard work, and freedom. I think almost every person in the Czech Republic knows the name of Route 66. From its inception, Route 66 was the road of choice for dreamers and adventurers, for people seeking a better life or new beginnings. It still is, but the dreamers and adventurers often speak German and French, Czech and Japanese. Route 66 is no mere highway. It is the Statue of Liberty for a new generation. It is freedom. It is an authentic American experience. It is an easy rider in the Grapes of Wrath, John Wayne, Indians, Harley Davidson, and Apple Pie. It is America Personified. Say hello to a new friend On an old road Take a two-lane trip of memories Into mysteries unknown Come along for the ride Jim Hinckley's America Jim Hinckley's America